Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10, coming to you live from Lagos. Here are the stories making our headlines this hour. Self-acclaimed Biafra loyalists demand referendum to enable them choose whether to remain in the country as police dismiss action. Ekiji State Governor Ayodele Faiche demands resignation of the president based on ill health. Presidents, he say, they have no response for the governor. The federal government declares Nigeria free of meningitis, also no case of polio in 2017. And helicopter attacks, Venezuela's Supreme Court, no record of casualties. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. You can also watch us on the go on your mobile device. Log on to m.channelstv.com or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. Having the Channels TV and Channels 24 apps will give you access to news and updates. You also have the eyewitness feature so you too can be part of the news. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. And now let's take a look to some of the pictures that you sent in. First is this image from Festic Town in Lagos. It shows this hole on the ground allegedly made by unknown vandals. Our eyewitness reporter describes this as sabotage and is calling on the relevant authorities to intensify efforts to check it. Next is this accident from Lagos State, which our eyewitness reporter says involved two BRT buses at about 9 a.m. today. Our eyewitness reporter is calling on the state government to monitor the road etiquette of the drivers. Still on road accidents is this disturbing image from the Kenna Junction along the Shigama Expressway where a container fell on a vehicle. Our eyewitness reporter wants the federal government to introduce stiffer penalties for unlatched containers. Finally is this picture of a flooded Osawe street in Benin City, Edo State. Our Irish reporter is calling on the state government to urgently address the hardship residents face every day. Many thanks for the pictures and we ask that you keep them coming. The Federal Airport's Authority of Nigeria fan, they've been explaining the cause of the leaking roof notice at the D-Wing of the terminal of the Muratan Mohammed International Airport in Lagos. The Acting General Manager of Corporate Affairs of FAN, Mrs. Henrietta Yakubu, says the leak was due to ongoing upgrade works at the airport last week. According to her, the construction was in compliance with the order given by the Acting President, Professor Yamiya Shibajo. According to her, she said that the leakages resulted from rainfall, which interrupted engineers replacing the old roof with new ones, adding that work immediately resumed after the rain subsided and the integrity of the roof has been restored. Five suicide bombers have been killed in a forward attack in Mamanti village, Bornu State. According to the civilian JTF, the suicide bombers were on their way to Midigari Metropolis at about 7 p.m. last night to hit their targets when one of the improvised devices exploded, killing five of them. The Army and the Civilian Joint Task Force were on patrol in the early hours of today when they discovered the bodies about four kilometers ahead of Marmonti village. This is the latest after multiple explosions at the University of Midigari Sunday night. And talking about the University of Medigiri, trade unions there are threatening a strike action over alleged insensitivity of the federal government to recurring attacks by Boko Haram on the institution. The leader of the unions and chairman, Academic Staff Union of Universities, Dr. Danny Mammon, at a press conference in Medigiri says this is necessary in view of the frequency of the violence, the latest occurring on the 25th of June. There have been eight attacks in five months at the university. Mr. Mammon says this shows that Boko Haram is regrouping and the government should wake up to its responsibilities. He encourages the federal government to build the perimeter wall at the school and approve the sum of 2.8 billion naira requested by the university authority to buy modern security equipment to prevent Boko Haram attacks. The governor of Taraba State, Mr. Darius Ishaku, is calling for calm. This is in the wake of tensions that may again break out in Mambilla. The governor, after a series of meetings with stakeholders in the state, says peace will return to the area soon. 
residents of Mambilla, who are predominantly farmers, have been in a long-drawn battle with Fulani herdsmen in recent times, leading to loss of lives and property. Governor Shaku has, however, set up two more committees to look into the matter. We thank God that the crisis has been subdued. But it's not subduing the crisis that is the issue, but we have to find what led to the crisis in the beginning. Because uh, initially we had had the information that the tension is building up there. And we have inaugurated a judicial committee to go in and look into the matter in depth. Uh, with a view of advising government on the ways government can take to solve the problem. Unfortunately, uh, the crisis started before they even the committee moved up. But uh, we had a very useful discussion today, very useful. Uh, I'm quite happy with the meeting with all the stakeholders because uh, virtually everybody made a contribution that is necessary. And to how the Paris club loan was spent, state governments in Nigeria have been compelled to make public the details of how they spent their over 380 billion Nigeria London Paris club loan refunds dispersed by the federal government. This is because a federal high court in Lagos granted a request by the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SARAP, to mandate states to publish the details for proper accountability. Sarap is asking the Attorney General to initiate legal action against the states that allegedly diverted and mismanaged the funds. The presiding judge, Justice Muslim Hassan, explains that accounting for the loan is in line with the federal government's anti-corruption crusade. Well, let's join Linda Kibwe, who has more stories from our Buja studios. Hello, Linda. Hello, Millicent. Now, a combined team of operatives of Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission and the Special Anti-Robbery Squad of the Nigeria Police today raided the residence of former Vice President Namadi Sambu in Kaduna State. A resident of the area told our correspondent that the ICPC and SARS operatives blocked the major road leading to Sambu's residence for two hours to prevent motorists and passersby from plying the road while the home was being searched. Although our correspondent could not confirm if they carted away some money, he observed the operatives moving out of the residence in a convoy. Attempts by journalists, including our correspondent, to find out more were resisted by the operatives who threatened to shoot anybody that came close to the house. Suspected kidnapper Chukudumeji Owamadike, popularly known as Evans, has filed a fundamental rights enforcement suit to compel the police authorities to either charge him to court immediately or unconditionally release him from custody. In an ex parte motion filed before the Federal High Court Lagos today, the suspect says he has been detained by the police since the 10th of June and subjected to media trial and parade without any court order. He listed the Inspector General of Police, the Nigeria Police Force, the Commissioner of Police, Lagos, and the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, Lagos Command, as the respondents in the suit. The applicant says he, there has been grave constitutional infraction perpetrated by the respondents against him as he ought to have been charged or arraigned before the court in accordance with Section 35 and 36 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The applicant's father, Stephen Owamadike, in an affidavit, claims that he and other family members have been denied access to his son, who is still in the custody of the respondents. He also claims that his solicitor has also been denied access. Meanwhile, the police says a three-month remand warrant has been obtained from the Federal High Court Abuja on the detention of the suspect, Chukudumeji Owamadike. The warrant, which is renewable on expiration, was obtained last Thursday to allow for investigation in Nigeria, Ghana and South Africa. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission says one of its investigators has been shot by gunmen in Port Harcourt. Mr. Austin Okwa, an operative in the property fraud section of the EFCC Zonal Office in Port Harcourt, was shot on Saturday by gunmen. According to a statement signed by the Antigraft Agency, the gunman opened fire on Mr. Okor as he left the office. 
He, however, survived the attack, but sustained gunshot injuries in the process and is receiving treatment at a hospital in Port Harcourt River State. The FCC disclosed that the attack followed threats to Mr. Okwo, who is involved in sensitive cases being investigated by the agency, including those concerning corrupt judicial officers. Ahead of the Anambra state governorship election, admirers of Governor Willie Obiano have been calling for more support from the electorate in Anambra state, Anambra south and Anambra north senatorial districts. A team under the aegis of the Allied Support Group for Willie Obiano says the governor is sure to win based on his performance in the last four years. <laughs> Members of the Allied Support Group for Willie Obiano, a group canvassing support for the Anambra State Governor ahead of the November 18th governorship election. Here at the Upo Town Hall in Newi, the group rallied support among representatives of Newi South, North, Ihiala, and Equisigo local government areas in the Anambra South Senatorial Zone, advising aspirants vying for the governorship seat to suspend their ambitions for now. The message is not any different at the Imweri Civic Center in the Anambra North Senatorial District. Members talk about their impressions of the Obiano administration. I know that the pensioners are, are paying well, teachers are paying well. There are many schools in this Anambra State, all of them are going to school. There's no problem in Obiano uh, uh, In a government or in a, in, a, in a community or in a state, where there is not a good security, I don't think that governance is good. And where there is not a, a, an adequate facilities in agriculture or in education, I don't think that government, that, that governance or that government is working. But since Obiano came into a government, he's doing well, most especially in terms of security aspect. While the group rounds up this meeting, it leaves party supporters with an assurance that the All Progressives Grand Alliance will be victorious when polls open in November. When the news at 10 returns, Business News will be bringing the latest figures from the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Do stay with us.